Hi team, hi team. Welcome to the session on coffee with Prab. And today we have our special guest. No need of introduction, Mr. Chen Me Kulkarni. This okay. guy is known for his GRC audits. This guy is known for his audit content. This guy is known for the GRC content. This guy is known for his case studies. And it is really a privilege for us to have him, uh, uh, you know, on this particular channel. We already did one 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 um, video, one series with Chinmay on audit interview, and we got a lot of love and support on the video. So I thought, let me disturb him. Let me disturb him again. And uh, it is literally, you know, uh, honor for us to have him again. And thanks, Chinmay, on a short notice. You know, it's all, it's all, you know, it's it's your it's it's your hard work and all the Chinmay. And, and to be frank, you know, I'm I'm using your content. Um, for my uh, my channel also sometimes sorry to say that but okay and because even in some of the projects i use your content for the uh, audit activity and trust me you're doing wonders in this particular area thank you so much thank so, you are my inspiration so thank you for again having... you're also the inspiration of many grc people you don't know but you can so. see your previous video and see the comment box yeah and so more to come yes definitely so chinme what is today what is the special coffee you're making for the subscribers yes, so, and the viewers yeah correct so i'll just give you a brief introduction about the video so there are a lot of no but before brief introduction about video we want a okay. brief introduction about who is chinme because i'm not oh, sure okay. that everyone is watching in the second video of this so Let's have a quick one minute of reviews. Who is Chinmay okay. and what he does? All right. So, hey guys, my name is Chinmay Kulkarni, and currently I'm working as a technology risk consultant at one of the big fours in the US, Ernst and Young. So, my main role is IT audit focused, and as as far as my experience goes, I have previously worked as an IT audit analyst at Fidelity Investments, which is one of the largest financial services firm, and prior to that. I did my graduation from Northeastern University, Boston, who were in cybersecurity. So this was my education. When it comes to continuous learning is one thing that I believe a lot. So to validate my experience with my skill set, I did ISACA Certified Information Systems Auditor Exam. Um, I did my ISO 27001 Lead Auditor Exam, which actually are helping me a lot to understand the audit approach. And with all the cloud recently going on, I did the CCSK1, which I think uh, is really helping me a lot considering my client background and cloud services. So that was one of my uh, quick introduction and I love to give back to community. So if you ever want to learn about IT audit, just feel free to check out my LinkedIn profile. There's a lot of content going around there. So, um, and thank you for, thank you for having me over. If you enjoy our videos often, I'll definitely love to be back on this channel. And we did one video already. We did one, one session which in my already on audit interview and we're planning to bring more videos like that to yes, you know bring change in the life of the people so chinmay okay. why we are today in this particular session what okay, we are so making this today the special coffee yeah so the special coffee is about there are many myths that i hear about audit is and a lot of people keep asking me hey audit is like this audit is like this like i don't know what to uh, do so in this video what me and Prab decided is I'm going to present you 10 myths that you will actually hear from everyone out there. And I will give you the 10 facts that are that happen in the industry out there. So don't believe in anything from some people who do not have audit experience and will be busting some myths out there for you. So Excellent. stay tuned and make sure you watch till the end. And I believe this is this video will be applicable for all kind of people who are in audit. It's not something only to yes, IT audits and all that, right? No, no. It's irrespective of like the audit domain. So it's not specific to any kind of audit. Great. So Chinmay, we can start with the first myth. Yes. So yes. Chinmay, we have, we, have, we have seen a lot of um, uh, videos we're talking about, you know, you cannot start your career with an audit job. Experience is mandatory. And thank, okay. and glad you bring this, this, this myth on this particular session. So is it true? Well, if you, if you want a real answer to this, you can just check out the fact. Here I am, right? Just check out my LinkedIn profile. I, I come from an engineering background. 
and I directly started uh, my career in audit at mm-hmm. Fidelity Investments, which mm-hmm. is a it's it's like one of the most financial companies out there. And I did not have any experience before that, and I started as a fresh IT auditor. One of the most important things everyone needs to understand is audit is not for experienced people. Audit will build your experience. And there are particular tests, there are particular areas in audit in which they requ- companies require fresh mind because audit is such a field where you have to have fresh perspectives, right? Every test or every audit area has its own, um, what, I, what I can call it, it's its own perspective. So that's a complete myth. I have started my career right fresh in an audit firm and right now I'm in Big Four. So prior to Big Four, they did not ask any experience from me. And when you join as an auditor, you, it helps you to understand how a business operates. So that's a complete myth. Just have the right skill set and you can start your career in audit. And I agree with the Jinmay Bar because, you know, when when I did my transition from the trainer to the mm-hmm. to the productions and all that, my first job was audit. And I okay. have zero experience. See, I, I was a security guy. I'm CISSP that time and all that. But for yeah. the audit, I have a zero experience. But the most important part for the fresher who watching this video is more than focus on experience. Mm-hmm. It's the mindset you have instead of that focus on the concepts because your first exactly. stage is to crack interview. Correct. Okay. And to crack interview, you need to know the concepts. You, so concepts. Exactly. if you talk about the any company verticals and all that, okay, they have a senior auditors, they have auditors, they have interns. Okay. Why are you okay. aiming for auditors? You can be, become an intern. You learn from the seniors, exactly. juniors, and then you can enhance your experience. So in some companies, exactly. they want a helping hand. They want someone okay. to, you know, help the auditors. So that is why they hire juniors. But exactly. But in that case, you also need to know, you know, on a high level, how audit works. What is the concepts? Like example, if you're doing a technology audit, you should know how a le- high level of Windows, Linux, example I'm giving. And if you're doing finance audit, you need to be good with financial metrics. So yes, exactly. In some cases, experience required, but in all the job experience required, it's wrong. No. Okay, exactly. so we have a live example of Chin Mei who basically work hard, study hard, and today he work for the one of the company, one of the big four. But it, it, it but we cannot say okay, he does not have experience. He had experience uh, about exactly. learning. He had experience. He and so so one thing is that Chin Mei, I'm sorry to uh, you know extending on this particular thing. So okay, so you said okay, we mm-hmm. we there's no experience required. So how to learn this stuff, you know, because to crack interview, you need to know the knowledge, right? So what is your advice for the people, okay, who are looking for a job as a fresher in audits? How how to get into, you know, the the, the, this. this, Okay, so my number of advice would be to research. You know, when I wanted to work as an IT auditor, I knew what I wanted to do. And I knew that, hey, I want to work as a fresh IT auditor. And now that you know that, there are positions available, just connect with people and talk with them. Networking will set you for success. You know, when I was about to get into audit, I talked with auditors on on, on my level and I wanted to understand what actually they do in their day-to-day jobs. That helped me to understand, okay, these are the concepts I need to know and these are the concepts I need to study. One of which was IT general controls, which I think is one of the most important and the most basic thing for any IT auditor should know. So once I knew that, hey, okay, this person is talking like IT general controls, I'll go and research more about IT GCs. And then I understood how the audit journey is. And plus there are a lot of videos out there on what is an audit or, you know, there's a lot of information available. So just go read and connect with people. That will help you to understand how you should navigate your career when you don't have experience. I agree. I agree with the one point which Chinmay has said, networks. Build your LinkedIn, connect with the people. Right. If you're applying for any job, review the JD properly, see if someone is basically in that company, try to connect with them. Because sometimes what happens, you, even you're applying a job by references, okay, you have a higher chance to getting your CV get shortlisted. Just imagine there's a job right. requirement in which 700 people have applied for a job. So you're also one of the 700. Right. But if you're basically going through the references and all, that, that the chance will be basically higher. So that's the exactly. most important. Network is the most important thing. And important. that's why we say persistence in your practice is the key to success. Okay, if you persistence exactly. with your activities, it takes time to land your first role, but with a dedication and strategic approach, you can make the successful entry. 
in the first job. Thank so you. persistence exactly. is very important, right, Chinmay? Very important. That is very true. You have to be very. Uh, you you won't like if you if you connect with ten people, not everyone is going to reply to you. you have exactly. To connect with people, and at least from hundred to thousand people, one or two people will at least help you and mentor you. So I think continuous network is one of the most important things. And I'm sure, Chinmay, you also face some rejections. I face rejection. It's not happening. Okay, no, what course, face? Like, If he see Chidmay is in EY or other company, so okay. But before joining that company, he saw rejection. So you have we have to mentally prepare for the rejection. You should not okay. get depressed. Exactly. I think rejections are a way to know where you went wrong and to change your strategy. So I think rejections are a part and parcel of your life. There's no one is perfect in that sense. I agree. So Chidmay, we have a second myth. What is that? Correct. So the second myth that I have is auditors always find the fault. <laughs> I mean, I I don't know like why people hate auditors, why our teams develop. I mean, hate auditors because they they say that hey, you guys are always nagging. Take my job. Like, yeah. Take exactly. my job. You are the one who find fault in us. You know, find you don't like yeah. our happiness. Why the hell yeah. you are? Huh? Exactly. I mean, I've been hearing that. I mean, been talking to my. The talking to clients, stakeholders. I always realize that the auditors are such a pain for the company. But actually, I'll, I'll tell you the fact. It's it's not about fault. Our job is to find facts. If we see there is a fault in business process that is going to affect the company, it's our duty because we are being paid for that. We are not being paid to find your faults. We are not being paid to monitor how you do your job. But we are paid to serve in the best interest of our company. So if we think this business process has a fault, there is a fault. Like that's what we do. But but Chinmay, one thing is that I think you know it's also depending upon how you the it's it's all about the persona you create about report writing and all that because there are some auditors right. who literally show the negative findings. You know they they just you know write in a such a way you know the process is pathetic, inadequate process. It could lead to revenue loss and all that. So it also depending upon how you basically present. Findings to the, the findings, exactly. management because example like last right. day suppose if I if I've involved in any audit, an auditor has basically prepared the report which include full of negative finding full of okay so that persona I it is created and now if Chen Mei doing an audit this year I have a same persona this guy is also doing the same thing so somehow okay. auditor should also take this accountability that there should be a balance approach when you when you documenting the findings or you know yes. it's not so, about finding only the negative but also talk about the positive okay. Right. During an audit, we discovered the data center's process documentation was inadequate. But the good thing is that there was segregation of so there is a compensatory control, That's like they have a bigger three uh, three I checks and the documentation to make sure you know the, if it's not document still the process remain adequate, which is the best thing we like in the process. So this is how I think it's exactly. it's good way to present the findings. Or what is your thought? Exactly because yeah I, I I do agree with the fact because I think auditors main job is communication right the way mm. you communicate with your client is going to set the tone for the auditor mm. and the why you're talking about report is before every report gets published it is duty of the auditor to agree on the findings with the client if you go ahead if you directly say that hey this is a flaw without telling your client it's going to create a bad impact with you mm. and your organization mm. so I would say communication professional judgment And understanding that even you're working for a company and your 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 duty is not an examiner. Your duty is to present facts. So when when auditors have this uh, mindset of finding faults, then the negative comments, you know, uh, not being appreciative of the process, and one one fault leads to another fault comes into picture. So I would I would say auditors should always be unbiased, um, and they should always be mindful of what they're doing. That that's a that's a very good point you said. So, uh, tell me one thing is that, what is your recommendation then, the person who watching this video, you know, how to balance the okay. approach? I would say the best way to balance this balance this is look at the bigger picture. Hmm. Are there any faults because of lack of resources, lack of skills, or is it a general mistake, or is it because the guidelines were not <clears> given <throat> to the stakeholders, or those kind of things, and maintain a balance. So. What I typically follow is when I find an exception, I do not report an exception straight away. I first consult with my manager, and my manager then consults it with the client. I think the most important thing is to ask because if you don't ask properly, you will not get the answer, and assumptions really? will only lead to negative things. So I would say if it's an exception, ask like what's the reason, 
why it was not observed or why this requirement was not satisfied. And if you get a satisfactory answer, just trust the application owner or the business process owner. Agree, agree. So Chinmay, uh, what is the next myth? Okay. I think next one is an interesting one. So yeah, audit is a one-time activity because I think it relates to my previous myth where if people hate auditors, they, they don't want to face them throughout mm. the year, right? Mm. Like they feel audit is a one-time um, activity, but I would say audit is not a one-time activity. Um, there are a lot of business processes that keep adding. There is audit is a continuous activity. See, you have an organization, you bring in new systems every year, or you have new businesses coming. How can you rely on the audit that was performed five years ago? Obviously, with generative AI being coming into picture, with machine learning coming into picture, with all these new regulations coming into picture, how can you rely on an audit that was performed last year? Because this, this technology, this application was not used and it's new in scope this year. So I would say continuous auditing is one of the most important aspects because as I said, audit is about finding facts and not about faults. So if you perform audit on a continuous basis, it will only help you to address the risks that organization is going to face. So I, I think that that that's one of the myths that, that is not, that is very popular, but it's not a myth. It, it's a fact that you have to have audits on a continuous basis. And, and that is why, you know, we have this follow-up concept is, you know, like the auditor is the one who identify the findings and then he do the follow-up on that. Right. He had to make sure the auditor should close that. So, uh, you know, it providing assurances like that. So make sure audit is not a one-time activity. Definitely audit is a project which has a start and end time, but we also have a continuations for the improvement of the controls and everything because auditor has to do follow-up with the auditees to make sure they close those findings, exactly. implement the controls and all that. Thanks. Thanks. Right. Thanks in May. So Chinmay, what is the next myth? Uh, next is uh, audit planning involves listing requirements and testing. Concerns. Yes, that's true, right? So that, that's not, I, I mean, partially yeah. it is true, uh, but I would say there are a lot no, of No, I know, I'm not agree with that. It, it's a list of control. Okay, we just have an ISO checklist. We follow some yes. shadow checklist and based on that, we do the assessment. Come on, Chinmay, you you're wrong. Take the boxes and you act as if ah. you when it's, Do you have a password it's... system? Do you have a policy? Do you have a patch management process? This is the role of auditor. What is that, Chinmay? This is what, you know, I, I wish, this is what audit does. I wish, that was, I wish that it was so easy to have, like, check the box approach, but unfortunately, it's not. So I would no, say... No, no, I'm not agree. I'm not agree. Oh. Okay, let's let's have a look at the fact. And I'm okay. pretty sure, like once you have look at the fact, you'll definitely agree. So, see, people say, it, Chinmay, come on, people people say that. Okay, you know, you know, we have a checklist. Mm -hmm. Okay, step one, documented procedure is there. Yes or no? That is right. what role of auditor here. Yeah. Come on, don't make me you know fool. It's a simple, right? Follow the checklist and finish it off. Okay, so I'll tell you one thing. What auditors um, mantra should be stressed but verify. Okay. If there is an audit procedure, show me there's an audit procedure. Then I'll trust you. If you are saying there's a password policy, show me evidence that yeah, everything follows. Yeah, policy is there. That's it. No, that's that's a duty. Okay, so the auditor's next step should be technically to review the logs to see if the audit, all the things are being followed as to policy. So as I said, evidence is very key in audit. And the way evidence is being pulled out is also an important thing. I think that that's, that's missing. But if we come to audit planning point, I would say, it's not only about listing on the requirements, it's not only about listing on the controls, but I would say it's also understanding the organization as a whole. If you do not know on what business unit or if you do not know which business processes you are going to audit or how it's going to impact the organization, how can you come up with controls? You cannot take ITGC controls and, hey, audit is done. That's it. We are done. You cannot take application controls and, hey, we are done. Like audit is performed, here's your report, blah, blah, blah. No, you cannot do that. Every organization has its own distinct business process and you need, you need to understand how this business process is affecting the revenue because I feel ultimately stakeholders care about their money, right? Because if you ask a stakeholder like, hey, this is a risk and the first question that you'll have is, why do I care? How is it going to impact my business? So understanding the business processes that impact the finance of the organization and then finding out the controls is how audit planning is done. And once you have that understanding of audit universe, which we call as a collection of different business processes, then you move ahead to the next step, which is having the right skill set of people. 
if you select the finance auditor and tell him to audit a technology application, there is no use. Audit planning also involves allo allocating the resources to right individuals so that your audit is performed smoothly. Because um, there's one thing that I would like to bring out is uh, many people think that audit is only about, hey, you have an application, you test it, you give it the audit report, that's it. But they don't consider the time factor. The time frame in which you perform a particular test is ultimately going to impact your client or your auditee because the auditee is paying you to do your job in time. If you tell a finance auditor to do a IT application or DevOps test, which he might not have any knowledge of, it will take a week for him to do so. But if you give the same test to, a, to an IT experience auditor, he can do the job in two days. So you save three days of time and you save money for the organization. So you need to allocate your resources properly and manage the budget. And ultimately the timeline as well, because audit is such an area where different regulations have their deadlines of filing the audit. And again, if, it, if, it, if everything is going to impact the revenue, you also have to work with the finance audit team to collectively perform the audit. So yeah, I would say that, oh, I'm sorry. I would say that along with planning, of involving budget and resources is also important. Audit is not about documentation. Audit is not about yeah. checklist. It is more than that, Correct. actually. Thanks. Yeah. But Chinmay, one thing is that, you know, my my question with uh, with following mm -hmm. fact is, like a lot of white papers are there. What lot of yeah. checklists is there on, in, in, uh, people used to share on LinkedIn, example, system audit checklist, network security checklist, mm -hmm. you know, NIST audit checklist. Is it really yeah. relevant? I would say yes, it is relevant, but not in audit. Okay. So my typical mantra is when I have a checklist, I use that checklist during a walkthrough call. Now, what's okay. a walkthrough call? A walkthrough call is a call in which you understand your auditee system. Let's mm. say you have a system XYZ and somehow on the internet, you get a checklist of mm. and you have these controls in place. So I use that checklist to ask questions during the walkthrough call. And when I ask questions during the walkthrough call, I get information that, okay, all these things are enabled. And then I develop my own tests to see if all these controls or all these tests are being followed properly or not. So I won't rely only on checklists. I would definitely use that at the starting point in understanding the background or the uh, business process. Excellent. So you mean to say that, you know, uh, just following the check. So, okay. So we're talking about, okay, not follow or not creating any checklist and all that. So do you have any advice for the aspiring people? Mm -hmm. How to create a checklist on a high level? Okay. Like if you take example of suppose we're doing a finance audit. Okay. Mm -hmm. So how to create a checklist based on that? Okay. So when it comes to creating a checklist, I will, I, I will, I will strongly advise you to have a checklist only for understanding purposes. Do not relate that checklist to every application. Okay. Um, but the one of the basic checklists I, that I use is for IT general controls, which I think is one of the most important general controls, change management, incident management, disaster recovery, business continuity. So there are a few general controls which are very common across all the applications. Mm. So have that checklist in place. And then depending upon, as I said, ultimately, how the application or a specific system is affecting the finance or the revenue, you mm. can then, um, you know, brainstorm more on how uh, the risk is. Because ultimately, as I said, the most important question is why should the organization care? Is there a money loss? Hmm. Yeah. Okay, go ahead. No, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead. Sorry. So is there a money loss and how it's going to impact my finances? Ultimately, when you try to answer these questions, you'll get to you have your own controls in place. Excellent. And if you need a next video with right. Chinmay on IT GRC control, do yeah. let us know in comment box. So I have a complete, you know, opportunity to disturb MC boss is the students, if viewers want this video. So please let us know in the comment box. Shall I made one video with Chinmay on IT GRC audit? This is called use the opportunity on gunpoint on the live session with Chinmay. So you will not oh, say no to that. Right. Yeah. Okay, course. Chinmay. So, I, I would love to. Yeah. So, Chinmay, what is the next myth according next to you? Myth, I think applies to. Hmm. I think you might be you might be very familiar <laughs> with this, right? Hundred percent security. Then why are we doing what? session, Lia, to hundred percent security organization is hundred percent secure. <laughs> but so, yeah, but I think is it true, right? No, I I won't I won't say it's true. It's it's not obviously true because. No one can guarantee 100% security, right? Mm -hmm. Because 
there are new threats evolving there are new things coming into picture there are new like generative ai coming into picture now quantum computing is coming into picture so how can you say that a system is 100% secure mm. so like i would say the answer to this no audit or no particular program can guarantee 100% security but mm. uh you have to understand the function of audit right when we talk about audit its role is to help an organization in improving its security infrastructure it's not fixing or protecting its infrastructure but it helps to identify the existing risks and then help in identifying or improving the existing security risks so i would say no one can guarantee 100% security it's it's all about how you look at the audit perspectives that that's what it got it excellent so next is basically uh if you take example of okay mm-hmm. do you have any suggestions how to improve the audit by which we can able to improve the security so do you have any perspective to be share here uh when i say about improving security i would say try to look at security mm. from a different perspective and not from a regular traditional perspective okay. because uh i i deal in such an environment where security is with respect to a business process or an application so not following a particular checklist is will definitely help you to understand how you can improve organization security posture and understanding the different applications in depth how they perform because ultimately it's all about data right mm. data enters one in the system from one end it transfers into another system so how can you prevent and protect the data that's what important that's good that's good thank you so what is the next uh, next myth we have chinmay okay so the next myth that we have is as we discussed earlier audit is about ticking the box well audit is not about ticking the box it's always about ensuring whether systems are compliant with internal controls regulations um they have compensating controls and it it boils down to how data is being protected so if if you have it general controls in place that's a good point but are those it general controls reliant and can you ensure i mean can you trust those it general controls solely on the business purpose so i would say a checklist is great to have as a starting point but it's not only about checking the box it's also about verifying that things are being in process and followed or not and i believe that is the most important part right yes of course like trust but verify you always have to verify if if your client says if your audit says that hey we have this place your next question should be show us um is if there's one thing that that i've always got my advice from my um, senior managers managers everyone i talk is to ask questions as an auditor it's your duty to ask questions unless and until you are satisfied no one's going to judge you because let me tell you one thing audit report is the most important report for your board of directors because auditors act as an independent and unbiased entity in the organization or the audit department has no bias let's say for example if if an, if if a certain team is using xyz application instead of abc application auditors don't care why would they care their job is to find out flaws they True. are not getting commission for using abc application nor they are getting any extra um, advantages of not using a particular application their job is just to find faults and present those faults in the audit report i mean facts in the audit reports so i would say audit is not about picking the box but it's about presenting an unbiased view and this sab hame dekha hai ye i'm sorry i just no, want no, to say one thing go ahead go ahead go ahead this sorry. is what this is what we see and this is what we feel is going to affect the organization so these are our recommendations it's up to you whether you want to implement them or not but yeah we feel this is the risk and i believe uh, uh, when it comes to the requirement of uh, uh, implementing the things and all that ask more questions because when you ask more questions right. it basically change the perspective it, it change the thought process so if you don't ask the right. questions you are limited to some activity you must ask questions exactly. because questions are basically exactly. very very important okay i believe that is the most important part yes and when you ask questions you will get the right evidence because sometimes people are people do not i, I won't blame clients because they do not know what type of evidence to share because it's not their job it's our job to get the right evidence and to get the right evidence you need to ask the right questions i agree with that okay so next myth chinmay uh, moving on to the next myth is 
audit is non technical work yeah. so technology people cannot work in audit yeah, yeah so do true. you think audit is all finance numbers yeah, yeah. excel yeah it's just a tech checklist document checking asking yes Doc- or no yes what what will computer science engineer engineers will do in audit right yeah uh, no well audit i would say is not only about technical again look at me i have done my bachelor's in computer science engineering i have done my masters in cyber security and i'm still not it the reason is because since earlier times um, even my father used to work as an auditor and he was oh. a finance auditor so i have i've always had that notion is that finance is excel audit is excel yeah uh, that is what true that is true things. that is true well 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 you use excel a lot uh but um you also have to have an understanding of technology let me tell you why um let's assume flipkart for example no promotions nothing let's assume a e-commerce company okay you you purchase some item on an e-commerce company you place an order you pay through your google um, pay or any any credit card something mechanism and the money is now reflected in that seller's bank account and ultimately all these transactions happen every single day right so how would you make sure that okay whatever balance the seller has right now is getting reflected in their general ledger or in their main source of account because ultimately it's data and the role of finance auditors is to only crack the numbers and match the numbers but the role of it auditors is to understand how this information is being passed from one system to another system because oh. as i said it's all about revenue and at the end the role of it auditors is to ensure that all these it systems which support revenue generating streams for organization are secure so you cannot ask a person who has done bcom or mcom to go and read a python code to understand how data is being transformed you need people with it background you need people who have who know how to read a code who need, you need people to know how how an it application works so that's why i always say audit is not only a non technical work it is technology heavy based focus when we when we talk about fintech applications that's a very good point you know uh, definitely you know i was just doing a leg pulling uh when it, even taking example of firewall audits okay when you're talking about right. dlp audits we're talking about uh, secure infrastructure audits and all that definitely if you want mm-hmm. to audit that you need to know the concepts you need to know that exactly. how things works because audit right. is all about finding a gap we know that okay right. but to it's, find a gap a same like you know when you basically you say this food is great this food is is amazing because you know the taste of the food that's why you can, you can able to judge same like right. whether it's right whether it's correct only you, you can know that when you know the things how it works right. okay exactly. so until na- until unless we can't we can we cannot drive the things so i agree with that exactly. point that okay it's very important how you how you take this perspective how you validate the perspective it's not limited to only documentations it's it's beyond that it's yeah beyond that, that's that, exactly. i agree with that much in my so jinme okay. so what is the next myth jinme next myth i would say auditors can predict all future risks that's true right that's yeah, what they were having know a... everything <laughs> we have this magical bond where we yes. where we where we know how to uh, how how the organization is going to operate well i think that's not a fact um uh, the fact is auditors identify current risks because we have mm. evidence from what is going in present mm. if a certain business department decides to use a different application after 6 months how mm. can we predict that mm. our our evidence and our reports or our conclusions are only based on what we have at this moment so when i talk about audit there are two aspects which are very important which is design effectiveness and mm. control effectiveness true so when i talk about a design effectiveness aspect i i check as an auditor if a control is being designed properly to mitigate the risk that we have as of now mm. and when i say control of uh, uh, operating effectiveness i i check whether the control that is designed to mitigate the risk is be- performing its function as intended so my my duty as an auditor is only to look at the current evidence i can refer to past evidence but audit in point of time which is which is is very important so auditors can never predict future risks it's all about current and updated evidence so you mean to say that when talking about uh, overall perspective validations and all that mm-hmm. uh, overall is basically like a validation part you know it's all about review elements 
and according to that they right. take a call you mean to say that uh yes i would say that is true at some part mm. uh but most of the most of the work of auditor is on evidence so okay um and evidence is something that has been in the past or in okay. the present you cannot okay. show a future log of a, so if i want to see a firewall log mm. i cannot see the firewall log for like 6 days i can only see what it has done till now mm. so i would say auditors can present if a firewall rule is not behaving properly i can mm. i can only show that hey it's not being properly as of now i cannot predict how it will behave in the future understood so it's not about predicting risk it's all about you know yeah. reducing the impact the but yeah risk. understand the current risk that's great yeah. so what is the next myth uh, chinmay i think um uh, i think this 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 myth relates to the previous one where audit is non technical work so technology people can't work in audit again i would say look at my profile and will have the same answer from me so understanding as i said understanding audit involves understanding the business processes and technology at the same time so i think this myth you already discussed so a person with an understanding of finance and a, a person with understanding of technology combination is the deadly combination so if you are someone who has who knows finance and also knows it like club does so i would say you you are a danger combination for a company so but yes it auditors are very important but uh, but one thing is that when you're talking about having a technology or validations part and all that mm-hmm. so how how we basically see a uh, okay sometime we get an opportunity i want to audit the non technicals and all that so how you take that Correct. perspective yeah okay so when i when i say about auditing non technical work i it mostly involves understanding the business process right mm. now there was one time where i i had to understand business process in terms of finance mm. and i did not know anything about finance so what i did was to learn like uh, like you know learning is a continuous process so you cannot mm. limit your knowledge to one thing mm. if there is something affecting your current work just try to search on internet and there is a lot of information available so continuous learning and understanding how you can apply that knowledge to your current skills is very important so if there's something you do not know just go ahead and try to learn it it will definitely blend in your current information knowledge okay so this is basically the you know overall view point you can say which we considering for the function right correct me if i'm wrong correct yes okay. from a, the birds eye perspective that's great okay so what is next um i think this might be the last or second last myth but mm. documentation means recording what went wrong yeah. so as you said it's about negative things right we pull out only negative things and write about um how 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 perhaps company is doing wrong how infosec clean has this all these flaws and what all they are doing wrong but i would say it's not uh, that's that's a very uh, different picture that people have in for auditors but as 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 an auditor we also highlight what went well right what best practices were followed what areas were improvements in made and i think follow up is one of the most important phase where we if if there is something that went wrong we also highlight that hey we took some efforts to fix this thing and now this has been mitigated so we also highlight that companies is making progress in terms of a finding and we also make sure that all the things are explained in, in a non technical manner because ultimately people who are reading the audit report they might not be from a tech background and all they care is wha- how it's going to impact my business so it's important to not only highlight negative comments or facts but also important to make sure that what organization is following as a best practice and i believe uh, you know documentation is not about only finding a fault documentation is all about recreating events something documentation is for record purpose improving the functions correct me if i'm wrong correct correct that makes sense so what is the final take on myth and fact overall uh, uh, so and what is the last that... advice yeah uh, so i would say yeah i think that was it. so i would say myth and fact is never trust user input yeah that that that's very important never never trust anyone always yeah. verify so if verify. anyone tells you a myth verify it with an auditor and the best way to do that is to talk with people so always follow this rule when it comes to audit is trust but verify so and i think that was and these are the very common myths i heard from people a lot of people talk about and i don't know why people have 
is great for auditors and i hope after this video a lot of people will you know try to learn more about the audit field and security audit and technology audit so i think that 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 was my take on uh, today's video that's that's great thank you thank you so much um, uh chinme for bringing this particular content and it's it's a very important thing to know about you know this gaps what they have in the myths and fact and i believe this yeah. is a, a a kind of a unique video we have made on youtube now which basically talk about the logics with the evidences okay and i'm sure mm-hmm. it has a great hit and it will bring lot of um, positive aspects of the audit and providing great insight what is actually true about audit correct which is very true so do let us know team um you know uh uh if you want the next video which in may on topic as i said itgc is basically i said on this live session do let me know what is the next video you want from us which in may and i will definitely going to disturb him for the next video and i'm sure by this chin may is bringing new values in the audit vertical grc vertical and his his content is just amazing do follow him on linkedin he literally put his hard work on making those contents and for me trust me jin mai i found that content is really unique very useful which Thank i follow so and much. and i'm sure those who are watching this video they also get the new insight from this thanks jin mai yes of course no of course i think there's only one thing that i want to say is the reason why i create content is i want to be the person i know i want to be the senior i wish i had when i was a junior so when i started in this audit field i had to research a lot about audit and i just i just want to reduce that time of new 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 freshers who want to enter this field by giving out audit guides audit documentation so that's that's my only i just want to save their time because i know i've spent a lot of time and it's it's a lot of work to put in so that's my only goal and i hope it does help the community and can we expect in the next one year uh, to be called as a author chinmay gulgandi auditor ki katha <laughs> you you can expect but as as we as we discussed it it's it's all about a process and my only aim is to on a weekly basis if i am impacting someone's life by asking questions it. and i'm making sure that um even though one sentence is helping in improving the knowledge i think that's the only thing that i'm expecting as of now so but it it's great to talk to people it's great to understand the perspectives and thank you once again for having me on this platform thanks thanks in may and team if you new to the channel do subscribe to channel and click on the bell icon to make sure you should not miss the future videos which in may thank you so much good day bye thank you prab yes